The Israelites always went down into Egypt, but they always came up out of Egypt. It says Abraham came up out of Egypt and he and his wife and all that he had and lot with him unto the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver and in gold. And he went on his journey from the south even to Bethel, under the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Hai, unto the place of the altar, which he had made there at first. Notice he returned to the altar. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for their substance was so great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and Perizzites dwelled there in the land. And Abram said to Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen, for we are brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. And if thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. If thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest into Zor. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan. And Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves one from another. And Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we come to you. We ask that you open our eyes that we may see not only things that are natural, but the things that are spiritual, Lord. Let us hear what the Word is saying, what the Spirit is saying to the church in Lincoln. Lord, let us make every decision wisely and with counsel and with prayer. Lord, all of us fathers here, Lord, we realize that the path that we have before us is not easy, but we ask you to help us this morning to make the right decisions. The responsibility that lies on us is great. We thank you, Lord, for your presence here today. We thank you for what you're doing. And, Lord, we thank you for the challenge that you're going to place before us. In Jesus' name, amen. Choices we make are very important. They do not just affect us, but our choices affect all of those within our circle of influence. We all make choices every day, maybe hundreds of choices Choices that we don't even know that we're making. Making choices is a big bulk of our day's work. That's why it is so important that we make the right choices when big decisions come in our life. We see that in chapter 13 that Abram and Lot's cattle were too great and there was intermingling together and it created conflict between the two. Something had to be done. A choice had to be made. It was in the best interest of both parties to resolve the situation as quickly as possible. So we see in verse 9 that Abram gives Lot a choice. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, I will go to the right. If thou depart unto the right hand, I will go unto the left. So we see the first thing Lot does is something any reasonable person would do. He surveys the land. Verse 10 says, Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest in Dazar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves one from another. And with his family and flocks, best interest in mind, we find that Lot chooses the best land, the most fertile land, a paradise. Did you notice in chapter 10 it said it was even as the garden of the Lord. There is no doubt in my mind that Lot believed he was making the right decision. 
verse 12, it says, And Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. How many times as fathers have we made a decision that was totally conceived and thought out in our carnal mind? A decision that every aspect felt like the right decision, but in reality led us to pitch our tent toward Sodom. It is easy it, to make decisions based on the natural, based on things that are seen. After all, we live in a natural world. We look around. We see things. We survey the land. But 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18 says that while we look not at the things which are seen, but we look after the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So I must ask, why would we base decisions in our life totally on things that we can see with our carnal mind or carnal eyes? Lot certainly based his decision on the scene. I see no place in Scripture where, where Lot sought the Lord for his decision. No place. That job that you just had to take, men... That overtime, those hours you just had to work, not because you were forced to, but because you wanted that extra dollar. You wanted that car. You wanted that house. Your willingness to uproot and ignore your family just so you can obtain the world's definition of success. Today we have become a society that is obsessed with possessing things. I heard a quote this week, and it is absolutely true. It says, "Our country, in the shape it has become, because we have it's the shape it's become because we have people, because people were meant to be loved and things were meant to be used, but instead we have turned into a society that loves things and uses people." Seemingly, Lot was trying to better his family and increase his riches, but he made the wrong choice. He had a distorted definition of success. How in your mind this morning, men, do you define success? As a whole, society def definition of success is very similar to lots. Power, prosperity, prestige are looked at as the highest goals. But God desires a different outlook in the lives of his children. Don't misunderstand me this morning. God wants us to be blessed. But there is a huge difference between being blessed and being obsessed with obtaining possessions. Time and time again we have heard the faith doctrine distorted and abused because it was used to obtain objects, possessions, not to be used as tools for the kingdom, but to be used for our own personal lusts and desires. God's view of success is walking in His way. As a father, it is so easy to get caught up in the world's definition of success. But we must guard ourselves, men. We must guard ourselves from these pitfalls. Why didn't Abraham make the choice of Sodom? C.H. McIntosh answers the question like this. A man of faith can easily afford to allow a man of sight to take first choice. How much faith do you have to allow God to make the choice for you? Why did Lot select a spot that was toward Sodom? It was because he looked at the outward appearance and not at the intrinsic characteristic and future destiny of that location. The intri intrinsic characteristic was wickedness in that city. And the future destiny was judgment. But he didn't see that. One could make the argument maybe Lot didn't know that Sodom and Gomorrah was so wicked. But God did. Had he talked to God, had he prayed, had he seeked counsel from God concerning his decision, God would have never allowed him to go there. 
he would have never allowed it. Can I give you truth this morning? Sodom suited Lot. It suited him. He liked it. Lot chased after things of the flesh. Trouble always arises when we run after things that please our flesh. Lot could not see the wickedness of Sodom because his sight was clouded by the watered plains. He only saw the outward and not the inward. How many modern day Christians are living the same mistake? How many actually seek the face of the Lord regarding decisions of their life? How many assume that the path that they're on is God's will? Caution to any believer that does not ask direction from God on things in their life. Caution and danger lies. Danger lies in your path. Lot did not only make the wrong choice in the direction he would go, but he also pitched his tent facing Sodom. The first thing he and his family would see in the morning was Sodom. The last thing that they would see in the evening before they went to bed was Sodom. We find in chapter 18 that Lot has not only pitched his tent facing Sodom, but now in chapter 18 he lives there. I promise you that if you pitch your tent towards Sodom, eventually you will end up there. Eventually you will end up there. Fathers, husbands, young men who one day will be fathers and husbands, listen. Just as Lot decided to alter his family's destiny, your destiny can be altered and your family's destiny can be altered based on your decisions. What price are you willing to pay? I'm telling you the cost of a wrong decision is great. It's great. Lot's decision not only affected him, but everyone in his family. Genesis chapter 18 tells us that Abram is visited by the Lord himself and two angels. And after a time of fellowship, we see that the two angels arise and they face Sodom because they have a mission to fulfill. Genesis 18 verse 20. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me. And if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces hence and went toward Sodom, the men being the two angels. But Abram stood yet before the Lord. And Abram drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Preadventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare a place for fifty righteous that are within? That be far from thee to do this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that they have, the righteous should be as the wicked. Be far from thee. Shall not the judge of the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the people for their sake. So we see here Abraham, Abram, a man who has a father's heart, is doing what Lot should have done. He was going before the Lord, interceding for his family. You know the story. He asked the Lord to spare for 50, then 45, then 40, all the way down to 10. Yet there was not 10 righteous in the city. Chapter 19, verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at the evening, and Lot sat at the gate of Sodom. The fact that Lot sat at the gate suggests to me that he had a place of authority in the city. A position of authority. Some say maybe even he was mayor. I don't know. A mayor type of authority. But he sat at the gate of the city and he judged the people. And Lot seeing them rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. He immediately recognized who they were. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house and tarry all night and wash your feet. 
and you shall rise up early and go on your way. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly. And they turned unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, and all the people from every quarter. See, this was a city that was perverted from the top down. From the top down, the oldest to the youngest, the rich to the poor. It was wickedness, wickedness, wickedness. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came unto thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. And Lot went out at the door unto them, and shut the door, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not do wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters, which I have not known a man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and you do to them as good as in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore they came in the shadow of my roof. Now, because of Lot's decision to live in Sodom, there is a mob outside his house demanding that he send two angels out so they could be raped. We see that even after everything that has transpired and Lot knowing that these were angels, Lot still lived by the flesh. He refused to let the Lord help. At this point, you think you'd be crying out to God, but no. He tried to defuse the situation by offering to send his very own two daughters out to be raped in their place. Can you imagine, fathers, mothers, can you imagine being in a situation to where you offer your own children? God help, God help, God help. I wonder how living in Sodom was looking to Lot at this point. I wonder how. It looked. I wonder if it was as grand as he thought it would be. But thank God we see in verse 9 and 10 that the angels smote the men with blindness to spare the daughters. What a high cost for living in Sodom. Genesis 19, 15, uh, verse 15 through 20 says, And when the morning arose, when the angels hastened, Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. Verse 16 blows my mind. And while he lingered, while he lingered, I, I, I feel that God sometimes has to pull us out of Sodom. Do we not have enough spiritual vision? to see where we are at that God I pray not I pray he does not have to pull us out of Sodom it says the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and about the hand of his two daughters the Lord being merciful unto him I should say they brought him forth and set him without the city and it came to pass when they they'd brought them forth that he said, Escape for thy lives. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plains. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said, Oh, not so. I don't want to go to the mountain. I don't want to go to the mountain. So we have a person that lives in Sodom who is so blinded by the sins and wickedness of Sodom, two angels have to come and spare his daughter with blindness on the men. They have to lay hold of them and practically carry them out of the city. Once they get out of the city, they say, flee to the mountain. And he has to haggle with God. Why the mountain? Can I go to this other city? Behold, now thy servant has found grace in thy sight, and thou hast mag and has magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I, I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take up on me and I die. I tell you what, the grace of God is amazing. The grace of God is amazing. This was grace in the Old Testament. Unmerited favor was upon Lot solely because of one man, Abram. 
Abram. Behold now, the city is near to flee unto. It is as the, a little one. Oh, let me escape here under. It is not a little one. And my soul shall live. So the Lord says go to the mountain, but, Lord, but Lot asks to go to another city. Turn to the person next to you and say, please do not be like Lot. Don't haggle with God. Don't haggle with God. Where God says go, go. What God says to do, go ahead and do it. Amen? You know the rest of the story. As the cities were being destroyed, Lot's wife looked behind. At this point, we, we, the family still cannot obey the Lord, and she looks behind, and she becomes a pillar of salt, a high price for a wrong decision. I pray that every man here hears me and will count the cost of the decisions you make on behalf of your family. Count the cost. God made a way after a way after a way to escape. And still Lot's wife looked back. See, husband, father, when you make decisions that you make and you pitch your tent towards Sodom, maybe you're a spiritual giant. Maybe you walk on water. But listen, Lot's wife was not. She lost her life. She had too much of Sodom in her. Where you take your family will determine your family's future. Do not pitch your tent towards Sodom. Do not pitch your tent towards the world because, listen, you may be lucky enough to get out. Your kids may be lucky enough to get out, but your spouse may not. Your spouse may not be lucky enough to get out. I know this is out of characteristic. Usually I try to go for the good, feel-good messages. But we have to be aware of our decisions. We have to be aware. For the next few moments, I want to talk about making good decisions. You may be wondering, how do I know? How, how do I decide? What is a blueprint that we can follow? Number one, know your word. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much moreover in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Men, fathers, husbands, as the priest of your home, you are responsible to work out your own salvation and lead your family and as a guide and example and show them how to work out their own salvation it's your responsibility joshua made it clear in chapter joshua 24 verse 15 and if it seem evil unto you to serve the lord choose this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the amorites in whose land you dwell but as for me and my house we will serve the lord Notice he didn't say, as for me, I will serve the Lord. He said, he spoke on behalf of his household. Men, you need to speak on behalf of your household this morning. That, on, that you will serve the Lord. As a father, you're, you're declaring things over your family. And it's time you declare who you will serve. It's your responsibility. Number two, we must pray. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. One of the hardest verses in the world to remember. Pray without ceasing. Meaning that we should always be in the spirit of prayer 24-7. Because we never know when a decision will arise that we will immediately have to make. 1 Chronicles 16, 11 says, Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face continually. 
prayer always pays off. Turn to the person next to you and say, prayer always pays off. Psalms 145, verse 18, it says, The Lord is near to all who call on Him, to all who call on Him in truth. And lastly, number three, use a source of wisely godly counsel. Proverbs 24, verse 16 says, For by the wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in a multitude of counselors there is safety. Proverbs 12, 15 says, the way of the fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkened unto counsel is wise. If Lot would have turned to Abraham, the very least, had he refused to ask the Lord for direction, if he would have turned to Abraham and said, I need counsel, I believe the Lord would have spoke to Abraham as to what Lot should have done. Fathers, husband, and men, the responsibility that lies on our shoulders is great. The Washington Times says that in every state, the proportion of families where children have two parents rather than one has dropped significantly over the past decade. Even as the country has added 160 new families with children, the number of two parent households decreased by 1.2 million. 15 million U.S. children, or one out of three, live without a father. You see three kids in a... Go look at our schools. Three kids. One out of those three is missing a father. Men, we have a lot of work to do. I know as a father, as a husband... We're not going to get every decision right. I know that. But we can do our best to seek the face of the Lord and get direction. Many will go down the path of Lot. But who will be Abraham's in our generation? Who will stand up and fall on our face before the Lord, stand up and say, no, no. If there be ten, will you please spare him, Lord? We need some Abrahams today. Ones who will ask God for mercy. Will you this morning? Maybe you have no children. Maybe your children are grown. Will you be an Abraham to a lot? There's a lot out there that needs you. He's about ready to make the wrong decision. Will you find him? Will you be an Abraham to him? We need intercessors this morning. Please stand with me. This morning, the Lord is searching. He's walking by your tent will you recognize that this is the Lord will you invite him in so he can tell his plans to you had Abram not invited in the Lord and the two angels I don't know that he would have heard what was going to happen to Sodom but he took time he took time to invite the Lord in and the Lord spoke to him Will you do that this morning? Will you surrender all your will and your way to the Lord? I pray that you will this morning. Hallelujah. Just make a new commitment in your heart this morning as we sing.
Lift your hands this morning. I serve. 